Hi everyone, welcome back for the first of our instructional videos in this series. This episode I'm going to be demonstrating how to prepare clay to make it suitable for use. So as clay comes, either fresh out of the bag like so, or from our pug mill, it tends to benefit from a bit of a need to even out the consistency of the clay and to get rid of any air bubbles, both of which are going to make the clay easier to work with. So the clay that comes out of our pug mill, we cut it into these four pounds lengths. So a pound, if you're a bit more metrically minded, is about 450, well, 454 grams to be precise. When we need clay, a good weight to start out with tends to be two pounds. So the first thing I'm gonna do is chop this in half using a piece of string, just down through the middle. And that's gonna give me two two pound pieces to work with. Alternatively, if you are getting the clay fresh from a bag like so, a way that I find works well is just to cut down through the middle and then out to the side. And then hopefully that should weigh in at close enough to two pounds. So when it comes to kneading the clay, there's a couple of different techniques. The first technique that I'm going to demonstrate is referred to as the ram's head or ram's horns technique, because with a bit of imagination, as you'll see in a moment, when it's done correctly, the clay will start to resemble a pair of ram's horns. So to knead the clay, I'm just starting with it standing upright on the table like so, palms cupping either side fingers cupping the far edge to me and the hot heels of my thumbs here are just resting on this top corner closest to me. I'm just going to start by tilting it towards myself very slightly, so just kind of pivoting it on this bottom corner here. So tilting it up towards myself and then with the heels of my thumbs here and here, I'm going to push down into the clay firmly whilst keeping the whole thing cupped with my palms and with my fingertips. So after that first push down into it, it's looking something like this. So you can see I haven't done too much to the clay with that one push. We're then going to use our fingertips cupping the far side to tilt it back up towards ourselves. And again, just pushing down into it with our thumbs, tilting back up towards ourselves. And it's really just a repetition of this very simple, quite gentle motion. Uh, so we're going to be doing this typically, I find a minimum of 50 times, but anything up to about 100 times might be necessary, which may sound like a lot, but once you get into the rhythm of it and you start getting the hang of it, it will go quite quickly. So some things to bear in mind are, I'm keeping those palms of my hands tightly cupping either end of the piece of clay. Uh, so with those hands cupping there, there's less risk of the whole thing spreading out into kind of a big long sausage shape. And I'm keeping my thumbs here kind of quite tight and close together as well. A plywood surface like this can be suitable. This clay is reasonably stiff, so it's not sticking too much to the plywood. If the clay is much softer or wetter than it is here, it will tend to stick to the plywood and you end up just with this real mess on the table. And that's when using plaster can come in quite handy. Kneading on plaster instead of the plywood, same process, but the clay is less likely to stick to the plaster. Uh, with the plaster being very absorbent, it will tend to dry the clay out and stiffen it up a little bit as well whilst you're kneading it. So kneading the clay, in addition to evening out the consistency and working out any air bubbles, will also, if you do it for any length of time, start to stiffen the clay up. Uh, so that can be handy if the clay has come out of the bag softer than you would like it to be. You can always stiffen it up by kneading it, but if you've bought a bag of clay and it's particularly stiff, there's no way of kind of really softening it up easily. 
Softer clay will tend to be easier to learn with, but there's less versatility with soft clay in terms of the forms you can make with it because it has less uh, structural integrity. Uh, so whilst it's easier to learn with slightly softer clay, being able to throw with stiffer clay or work with stiffer clay in the longer term will be more beneficial. So this is what we refer to by the, the ram's head or ram's horns uh, technique. Again, a bit of imagination is needed, but you hopefully get some sort of idea of what I'm going on about. So the reason for throwing with two pounds of clay at once is that it's twice as quick. If you were to need every one pound piece of clay individually, you would need to spend the same amount of time kneading each piece. So by kneading two pounds at once, we've done twice as much work in the same amount of time. It's also a bit easier to get your hands around two pounds. Um, trying to knead one pound at a time, it does tend to get a bit fiddly and a bit cramped trying to fit your hands around it. It also gives us the opportunity to chop this two pound piece of clay in half. So just cutting down through the middle with our piece of string. And by looking at this cross section here, we can check for any little air bubbles or anything like that. If there are any little kind of pinholes or any kind of gaps indicating air pockets, that's a good indicator that throughout the whole piece, there's gonna be air trapped in there, which is very much what we don't want when we're trying to throw or trying to work with the clay because those little air bubbles will really throw things off and make things much more difficult than they need to be. So a nice, clean, smooth cross section is what you want here. If you want to, you can just pop them onto the scales to make sure you've cut it in half more or less where it wants to be. And then the last thing you're gonna do is just pat these into something nice and round. So I'm going to take a short break now to talk a bit more about The Art House, um, our GoFundMe campaign and why we're producing this series of videos. So we're a small charity, we work with a large number of people in and around Sheffield um, dealing with quite a wide range of different mental health difficulties and our aim is to help them achieve an improved sense of well-being through creative activity. Like a lot of other places all over the country and across the globe, we have had to close our doors for the foreseeable future due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. So whilst we're closed, we're trying to do as much as we can to keep the art house afloat and keep ourselves going through what is a tremendously difficult time. So with that in mind, one of the things we have done is to set up a GoFundMe page. The link to that is in the description down below. In conjunction with that, I have thrown a hundred of these pots. If you want one of these, all you have to do is head to our GoFundMe page, make a donation of £10 or more. In the comments you leave with that donation, just give us your name and tell us that you'd like one of these pots. And then when all of this has blown over and the art house is back up and running, one of these will be reserved for you to come and collect from us. So to those of you who have already made a donation, thank you very much from everybody here at the Art House, both those of us who work here and the hundreds of people who use our services here. Um, it really does mean the world to us. Um, if you haven't yet made a donation, uh, thank you in advance and back to the video. So that's the ram's head technique of kneading. Another way to knead clay is spiral kneading. Uh, so I'll just get this plaster out of the way because the plywood seems to be doing the job well enough. So spiral kneading, it tends to involve one hand being more dominant than the other hand. So whereas with the ram's head technique of kneading that I was just doing, both hands are working equally. So the ram's head technique tends to work well when you're first learning because you're doing the same thing with both hands rather than both hands doing slightly different jobs. The main drawback with the ram's head technique is that with larger amounts of clay it's difficult 
to kind of keep the clay under control and that's where spiral kneading, in my experience at least, tends to be a bit easier. So to spiral knead, I'm going to be using my left hand more dominantly and my right hand in a more supportive way. So I'm kind of rotating the clay, so I'm pushing down to the right with my left palm, so something like that. And then with my right fingers underneath the clay supporting it, I'm kind of tilting it back up towards my left shoulder. And then again, left palm pushing down to the right, lifting up. And again, as with all things working with clay, this is quite tricky to get the hang of, but once you do get the hang of it, it tends to be quite quick. That should do it. And then same again, just cutting in half with your string. Checking that cross section and then you've got two pounds of clay to do whatever you want with. So that's it when it comes to kneading. Uh, the next thing I'm going to be doing is using these pounds of clay to get onto the wheel and show you how we get the clay centered. So I'll see you there.